Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I thought I would do some gel printing today. I have a 12 by 12 gel plate, and it's dirty, but I have a soft 4 inch speedball rubber brayer. And then I have a few stencils that I designed. I drew the designs, and I have a laser, and then I laser engrave these. And then I have some acrylic paints. I have a little bit of uh, Nita's all-purpose acrylic. And then I have, I saw it here just a moment ago. Where'd it go? I have Master's Touch acrylic, and this is antique gold. So those are some of the things that I'll be using. My gel plate has some what we call crusty bits. So it has a little bit of some gold little flicks on it. I'm not worried about it. They'll eventually come off. If you are concerned about paint that's still on your gel plate, you can clean it off, soak in a little bit of warm water with a mild detergent. Do not scrub it with anything abrasive because it will damage your gel plate. The other thing you can do is just put down a layer of paint and then put down paper on top of it and just keep lifting it until it finally comes off. All right, so let's get started. I have the stencils from the wild and free subscription box this is the half sheet it has two different patterns and then here is the full sheet which has this repeating pattern but i think what i want to do is i want to use this pattern on the right side of the stencil and i've got island blue so i'm going to take a little bit of this and i've got a scrap of paper over here to the side and so I don't want too much paint on my gel plate, so I'm going to put a little bit over here. I'm going to use my brayer to pick up some of this paint, and then I'm going to come over here and brayer through that stencil. And I want to move my stencil around every so often, so I'm just going to drop it down just a little bit. And let's go up towards the top. I'm trying not to lay it in the wet paint. So I'm kind of holding it up just a smidge. All right, so I'm going to put this in my tub of water that I have over here to the side. Basically, I take a tub and fill it full of water with a little bit of Thieves Cleaner. You can use a mild detergent that you would feel is safe on your stencils. And I'll let those soak, and then when I'm done with my gel printing session or mixed media session, I'll take them to the sink and rinse them off, and the paint generally comes off pretty easily. I'm going to let this dry for just a moment, and then I'll pick up a different stencil. I'm layering. So some people had asked, why do I keep putting more paint on here. Well, I want layers. And yes, you can do this direct to paper. You just have to do it in reverse order. You have to lay down the background and then layer your stencil patterns or designs on top of that. Well, here you put down what you want to see in the foreground or the front on top, and then you just keep layering behind it until you're ready. So we'll let this dry for a moment and then I'll pick another stencil. The paint's not completely dry yet, but I think I'm ready to add my next stencil layer, which is the Flowers and Vines stencil, and I've got a royal blue paint. I think it's an older paint, so we're going to see if it works. I'm going to squeeze some out again over on my scrap of paper. This just kind of helps me not put too much paint on my gel plate, because you don't want too much, because it makes for not very good prints. All right, so I've got some paint loaded. Grab the stencil. And I want to fill in a couple of areas. So again, I'm trying not to lay the stencil all the way down. And again, I'll put this stencil in the water for it to clean up. This time I have the Diamond Bar Rubber Stamp from Beeline Designs. And I have Royal Fuchsia. So this time I'm going to brayer this out just a little bit onto my paper, kind of smoothing it out. And I'm going to use my rubber stamp in the paint like it's a stamp pad. So I'm just kind of picking up some of that paint. And then I'll stamp. 
And if I want, I can also take my brayer and run it over the stamp. Now, if you're going to use this technique with your rubber stamps, you want to make sure that as soon as you're done, you wash your rubber stamp because that paint will dry into those crevices and it will cause your image not to be near as clear. I think I'm having better luck with the brayer trek to the stamp. I'm just alternating the direction and then just putting it all over. All right, now I'm done with the stamp. I'm just going to pop it into my water and that will help soak off that paint and I can take it to the sink later and scrub it clean. For my next layer, I have some bubble wrap and I'm going to use the antique gold. So put a little bit on my paper palette that I'm using over here and I'll use my brayer and just roll over that bubble wrap a couple of times and then I'm going to press it and lift and that's going to leave a little bit of a gold pattern here and there. It's not very dark. It's going to be in the background, but I like the pattern that it ends up leaving. Well, I think I've got all the gold I want to put on here, so I'll let that dry for just a moment. This time I have purple, and I have a spool from a thread that I thought was interesting because of the concentric circles in the center. Isn't that right? Concentric when there's one right after the other. So I'm going to squeeze out some purple paint here, and I'll use this again as my stamp pad palette. So I'm just kind of dipping it in the paint. And I think there's a little crusty bit in here, so I'm going to try to get rid of that. Okay, let's try it now. And I'm just going to stamp it every so often. I think that looks pretty good. Again, I will use the water in the tub to clean my tool so it will be ready for next time. I think I have one more texture I want to use. So I've got some black paint. So I'll squeeze out a little bit of that. I don't want a lot. And I have a sea sponge. This is really old. I've had it for a long time. So my idea is I just want a little bit of black every once in a while. So I'm just barely touching it to the gel plate, just adding a little bit of texture in the background here. Okay, I think I like that. So I'm going to clean off my sponge. I'm going to let this dry for just a moment longer, and then we're going to come back and we're going to lift the print and see how it turned out. This has sat drying for a little while. Up to this point, I've probably spent about 25 minutes on this gel plate print because I want each layer to be dry and not turn into mud when I go to put on the final color. Depending on where you're located and what kind of paint you are using, it may dry faster and it may take longer for it to dry in layers like this. That doesn't mean that you have to stop and not print. You can print with wet paint. Just know it could smear a little bit. It could blend with the others. And if you're getting mud, your paint was too wet. All right, so I'm going to pick up this time morning blue and put a blue on the back of this and then we're going to lift it. You don't want too much paint, so I'm just putting a small amount to start with, and we're going to brayer over the whole gel plate. Oh, there was a little bit of that purple that was still wet. That's okay. You want to spread the paint evenly across the plate. Don't press hard. If you're getting marks from your brayer, are you using a soft brayer, and are you using a soft hand? You don't want to push real hard into the paint or it will pick up that texture of the brayer. But I think that'll be good. So I'm just gonna grab, I've got an old book page here. So I'm just gonna grab it and place it down on the edge. And since I've got this little strip up here, I'm gonna grab another book page. I'm gonna hold on it. 
this will work. Now, I'm using a book page, so you may want to test the book that you're using. Mine isn't all that old, so the papers are not brittle. If the papers are brittle, they're not very good for gel printing. You may have to glue it to another piece of paper so it doesn't tear when you go to remove it from the gel plate. I'm just rubbing the paper to get that paint to adhere to it. And the paper may start to wrinkle a little bit. That's just the nature of it. Don't fret. All right, so here is the first edge. And there's still some paint on my gel plate. I'm not worried about it. It'll be good for crusty bits the next time. So there is that top portion. Let's see how the big piece turned out. I like it. I like the pattern that it ended up making. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this gel print session. I was trying to make a short video for you all. I thought you would might like to see that type of put together. I'm going to clean off and move on to something else, but I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. Hey, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Know that I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. And come back because I will have another tutorial showing you how to use this gel print. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Use that comment box down below. Check the description box for links to the stencils and stamps that I use. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.